Good evening and welcome to our second Gavi Super Value County Senior Hurling Championship program. It's a preview of uh, the weekend games and we'll have a look back at the opening round last weekend. All those games, of course, to you brought, brought to you by Clubber, um, Clubber TV, and uh, we would uh, uh, obviously encourage you uh, to buy the annual pass because you will get all the games in this uh, county championship. And uh, for those who are interested in football, we have the uh, club championship in football starting in August and in September the senior uh, football championship. So right up till October, we'll be quite busy on Clubber providing a unique service and it's a, a service that obviously not alone can you watch the games here locally at home um, in front of your TV but you can also watch them if you're abroad so the diaspora is very important and the beauty about the clubber coverage is that if you're not can't watch at a particular time of the game you can watch it later on and you can also watch it as many times as you want an unbeatable package I would say so now this week again, I've got a different panel, actually slightly different. We've uh, sort of uh, rearranged the deck chairs in the Titanic, as it were. And um, with us this week, I have John O'Dowd. He's a local freelance journalist. He has worked with both the Kerryman and he went to Dublin and abandoned us for a while as well and uh, worked with the uh, Daily Star. He's now back at home in Tarbert and he covers a lot of the Hurling Championship and uh, some of the Kerry games earlier as well. Um, so John he will be making a contribution here tonight um, and uh, his predictions, let's hope they'll be a little bit better than they were last week. Uh, next is a new man, uh, obviously to the Kerry Hurling public they would know him well, but to anybody outside of North Kerry who haven't heard of Ian Brick, it's not Shane Brick, it's Ian Brick. So Ian Brick is with us. Now, James McCarthy cannot be with us tonight from Kilmiley, so what do we do? We said, where can we find somebody with eight county championship medals? And where senior medals? And where do we find them? Ian Brick. So Ian has eight senior county championship medals. Uh, he's a unique, unique man in many regards because he's also managed Kerry teams, Kerry minor teams for three years, I think two years or whatever with the under 21s. He won some All Ireland's and then he changed over and became rogue and he was the manager of the Kerry senior Camogie team for a couple of years uh, with a lot of success as well. So he's got an, in, uh, an, an unbelievable knowledge of the game. He played it obviously as well with Kilmiley, played with Kerry um, and was a very handy midfielder when he was young, which is of course a long time ago. Now what separates him from um, James McCarthy? Well, other than not winning an intermediate championship or winning an intermediate championship that James taught us last week he hadn't won, he's a cricketer as well, or he was. So he could bowl uh, uh, a maiden over. As well as that, he was hitting sixes into the basin and that was something that James could never do. James arrived at the cricket field one evening <coughs> and uh, he was promptly sent home uh, when he hit somebody over the head with the ball. Um, but we have Ian here. Ian, you're very welcome. And we look forward to your contribution tonight. Thanks, Mark. And the youngest member of our panel, of course, is Aidan, Aidan Leahy. Aidan, unfortunately for him, comes from the Abbey Dorney Club. Uh, Abbey Dorney are a team that have won the championship since 1974. No, and uh, it's been a long time. And uh, they're trying hard. I think they have a reasonable chance this year. I moved out there hoping they'd win the championship. And I think... Uh, I might die out there first, but anyway, <laughs> we won't say that about them. Aidan actually, a uh, very good commentator. He coached the team as well uh, back in the day. It was the under-21s. I might have uh, spoke to minors, and they lost the game, obviously, to Crasher, and he refused to talk to the press. <laughs> but anyway, we still have him on board, and um, he's now a banker, by the way. Um, probably that. encouraged... Uh, <laughs> John O'Dowd to make an error last week, uh, <laughs> but he works for AIB Bank now and uh, one of the conditions of his employment was that he would empty his piggy bank and lodge all the money in the bank, which he has done. And apparently they found some old notes there, his communal money. But other than that, he's a good knowledge, a very good commentator, and we'll enjoy his 
contribution tonight. I'm uh, Mort Murphy, uh, and uh, I don't think people need to know anything else except when I mention that name. <laughs> They're probably you probably remember the 1974 win for Abbey Dorney, do you? No, actually, but I could have. I was in another county. I was in Cork hurling for UCC at the time. <laughs> and now we're going to move to some action because we have some highlights of the weekend for you out there in Clubberland, etc. We have the first game of the weekend. Uh, saw the newbies, the county intermediate champions last year, which, by the way, Trilly Parnells back in the day, I think in Brick, it was certainly coaching in there, so he can take some responsibility for the fact that they ran Lixna um, without Shane Conway very, very close. So now enjoy the highlights of that Friday night encounter and uh, you'll see who, uh, wh what happened and how close Parnells came to causing a shock. Start. Morgan Madden did very well, was fouled, the ref's playing advantage. The ball's gone in now in towards the three Parnell's full forward line. Out in front of his man and trying an attempt at the post and putting it over superbly is the corner forward, Oshin O'Brien. First score from play of the game, first score from play for Tralee Parnell's, a super. Impressed with uh, Tralee Parnell's, they're not backing down. Sideline caught from Lixnav on the left hand side of the field, ball breaks, chance of an easy score. And it is put straight and through there by Lex now. Brothers, as I said, both of them play. Shane plays more. Here we go again. Uh, we better go back to the play. That's yeah, great play by Aidan Shannon. Pluck that puck out, out of the air. He finds Colin Sheehy. Colin Sheehy in towards Darren O'Brien. Darren O'Brien. Ball is laid off. Goes inside towards the full forward line. Good defending by Niall Cassidy. Can't connect. And straight and through and over the bar by the feet. Morrissey. Morgan Madden's looking for it. It's popped off to Madden. No, it isn't. It's intercepted again by Ricky Heffernan. Lixna breaking up play very well at the moment. Here's Shane McGilligat. McGilligat in low. Towards on stack again. He seems to have the beaten maybe of his cornerback. Can he score this time? Yeah. I think he can on stack. Hurting the underdogs here. Here goes Ricky Heffernan. Tries to go through a gap to Shane McGilligat. McGilligat's on fire. He's running. He's gone past two or three Parnell's players. This would be a great score. Magnificent individual piece of magic. One midfielder, Ricky Heffernan. In the fullback position. Ricky Heffernan. Ricky inside now towards Owen Stack. Can he burn Jonathan Low for pace? This is excellent from Owen Stack. This is a great chance of a score. Doesn't really hit it as well as he wanted. Ty Brosnan has it. Round Skilsonen. Good play by Ty Brick though. He's back covering. That's excellent work by Ty Brick. Ooh. Could have been a goal for Lixna. Yeah, but it was a good... Yeah, that's too long. They need to get involved. That's the second time Colin Shee has done that. And a mistake by Colin Shee. Ty Brick. Ty Brick will know his side need a score. He's the captain. Lays it off to John Sherman. The man from Leash. He's going through. Is Sherman fouled? No. Good defending again. Think it was by Jared Stackpool. Can Dara Shannon clear his lines? The ball's blocked off. After playing against the elements, they go in at the break. Leading by seven points to four, your half time is still finding it difficult now to make their way into the opposing half of the field. Chance now, though. Here's Killian O'Reardon on the straight burst. Morgan Madden's to his left. O'Reardon uses his strength to hold off Dara Shannon. Now it's O'Brien again. He got the run, he scored from play in the first half. He's done it again. Oshin O'Brien, all of 50 metres out. Play by Parnells, very competitive. But not lacking in skill levels either. Here's Gerardo Dardy putting himself about. This could go out for silence. Brilliantly picked up. Well done there. And it's Colin Sheehy. That was a nice piece of play by Darren O'Brien. Colin Sheehy sends it into Stack. Now Stack's opportunity. He's one point in the first half. Can he grab his first point of the He's second half? He does. Yeah. Oh, and Stack over the bar. It is time. Maloney's going to clear his lines. There was a potential licks now. Goal there. Here's Maloney again. He finds Ty Brick. Brick. In towards the full forward line. She he's the pace to beat Dara Shannon here. He does. She he turns Dara Shannon. Can he score? I think he has scored. Any she. Are we in the verge of history? Oh, oh great catch. take by Ricky Heffernan. Oh, Lays it back to Tom Foley. Tom Foley now. Chance of a score for Lixna. Has to be a score for Lixna. Colin Sheehy over the bar. That's oh, it's gone wide. Stackpool takes it quickly. To Dara Shanahan. Dara Shanahan sends it in now towards Kelton Malloy. Malloy, good stick work, good control. Lays it back. Chance of a score here now. I think it's on stack. On stack, 45 metres. He's a chance of an equaliser on stack. He gets the oh, equaliser. Yeah, yeah. Oh. 48 minutes gone, 12 minutes to go. 
What can Lixnar do? It's grabbed here by the cornerback. Darren McGilligan lays it out to Jack Brosnan. Brosnan from about 60 metres. He hits bar. it high, he hits it through. That's a great score. Just when they needed experience at this level. Good man to get a score as well if the opportunity presents itself. Slither comes out to him straight away. Jamie Galvin, he's in possession. Jamie to the centre. Here's Shane McGilligan. He's got the pace. He's got the pace to go all the way. Will he go for goal? Oh, he does go for goal. Wonderful save by Pip Gilsonen. That's a good piece of licks now defending on this occasion by Jamie Galvin. Galvin, led to Kelton Malloy. Malloy goes for broke from distance. That's a great score by Kelton Malloy. Time to go. Licks now leading 13 points to 12. A real humdinger on clubber for the start of your Kerry County Senior Hurling Championship. Here's Killian O'Reardon to Madden. Powerful figure is Madden. He's going to go for the score from 60 metres. Morgan Madden. I think it's... Tr- it is! It's over the bar! There's no... Still time for Tralee Parnells to pull this out of the fire. Oshin O'Brien. Oh, it's intercepted by Dara Conway. Dara Conway to Jamie Galvin. Jamie from long range. That's tra- Jamie Galvin. What a magnificent score. By the- Everything else has been in their locker tonight. Here's big Shane Healy. The bearded wonder. Here he goes. He's on the burst. Will he go for goal? He does. Save. Free in. Free in. Ref has given a free in. Shane Healy left. They have to create an opportunity. Oh, not intercepted. Tie brick. He's going to try it. It's going to break. Over. No, it's just going to go wide on his own side. Ah. Tie brick. Oh, tie brick. What an opportunity. You had the opportunity. A great quick. As you said earlier, here's brick again. Injury time's up. Can Ricky have an interception? Heffernan, can he get the insurance score? Yeah. This has to be the winner. This is the winner. Yeah. Ricky Heffernan, two points to get an equaliser. It's broken to Aidan Shannon. Nick Snad, they want to see it out. Yeah. They do see it out. The ball broke to Aidan Shanahan. He's the man in possession at the final whistle, blown by Jonathan Hayes. But Nick Snad may be winners tonight, but you cannot say that Tralee Parnells are losers, Mart. What a performance. Yeah. So there were the highlights of the first game of the weekend in the Gabby's uh, Super Value Senior Hurling Championship. And uh, one would have to say, based on what we've seen there, um, that uh, Lixna got out of jail. Parnells had a lot of chances near the end there of at least getting a, a point out of the game, John. Um, it was, it was a, I suppose we have to say, first of all, both sides are missing players. I mean, Parnells are missing so many players, including Brian Lonigan, the Reams, there's three Reams missing. I think there'd be one or two of them back. Uh, one of them is doing exams. Dara courses in the States. And you had Luke Chester. Was it nine that was missing from last yeah, year's Yeah, I think that's, that's the big thing to take out of the game last week. When you're intermediate champions and you're coming up to that more higher, more exalted level, ideally you want to have your full team. You want to have the team that won the intermediate championship for you. They were missing nine starters from the team that beat St. Brendan's in that intermediate final. I know Licks now were missing six from the county final against Crotta last year, including, of course, their talisman and Shane Conway and a few other big names like Conor O'Keefe and uh, Jeremy McKenna, John Buckley, etc. But for uh, Stephen Buttermer, the Tralee Parnell's chairman, said to us before the game, their main aim on the night and probably for the whole championship was to be competitive. But you'd have to say they were a lot more than competitive. After 56 minutes, it was 13 points apiece. They were well uh, in with a chance of winning that game. They had a goal chance at the end when Lixna were one or two points ahead. If that had gone in, it could have been a famous victory. But they certainly showed that they're very well capable of, uh, of playing at this level. They did themselves proud. They, they would have went home on Friday night disappointed, actually, that they didn't win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Ian, obviously you would know a lot of probably of the Parnell players, I know some of them anyway, and you know the club, I think you've got uh, your brother are involved with them, David. Or, David, yeah. Yeah, David is involved with them, so you'd know the way they're thinking. Uh, were they probably disappointed that they didn't, or were they pleased with the performance? Yeah, disappointment would have been the, the first um, reaction, I suppose, really, that... Um, like John said, I suppose that when they were missing so many, they probably didn't know what to expect. Um, they would have seen it. now obviously missing a few players, of course, and maybe saw some opportunity to at least give a good performance. And I, I think, look, overall, 
Um, there's probably no team who would have been very happy with their overall performance um, who played last weekend. But look, for the first game into the Senior Championship, it's a big, big step up. And they'd have to be somewhat pleased at the same time. Um, there's plenty of room for, for improvement. Um, I would say that uh, some of the players will be very pleased with, with their own uh, performances as well. Like Zanile Cassidy did, did very well there at the back. And um, you look at your county players and our panellists uh, like Satai and Morgan, then that that uh, they'd be kind of the leaders, I suppose. So there's room for improvement. And, and the dock, yeah, look, yeah. the dock has been there for a while and uh, he's, he's a great striker of the ball. The legs mightn't be as, as yeah. willing as the, the head is, but uh, he's good, great striker of the ball, like I say, very good from freeze, obviously, as well. He's certainly a role to play and he's just one of many sweepers, I suppose, over the weekend who, who did well. Um, look, overall, you, you, Parnes will be disappointed, but uh, plenty to take forward, I suppose, into the next couple of games. Yeah, and Eden, I know you're going to be playing them next time. I say, Abby Dawn, you're going to be playing Parnells. Well, let's uh, concentrate your neighbours down the road, Lixna. Um, I presume without the Conor O'Keys and without the, the Shane Conways, they'll be happy enough to have got over the line because they're invariably slow starters in the Championship. They often lose a first game and then go on and, and might even reach semi final or final. So, how do you think they performed? I was surprised they got kind of embroiled in the way they did because when I saw them in the county league they looked like probably one of the fittest teams in the county league so I expected them to be you know fairly ready and up for it the last day now I think from an Aviorna point of view like we were quite happy not to be playing Parnells first because it was always going to be really difficult they were going to be really up for it we've seen it a couple of years in a row there we got Dr Crokes in their first senior game and like it's really tough to play a team coming in with that bit of excitement and that bit of uh, I suppose there's pressure on them to try and do themselves justice playing for senior game and how many how many every years, um. So I'd say in the end of it, they were probably happy to get away with it, and I'd say Barry Hennessy has given them a fairly, uh, especially with the fact that they have the break this week. I'd say they've had a fairly uh, tough week so far, trend. I can see that continue, and I'd say he's going to, he's going to give them a, a good test uh, during during that week off, which is probably what they need, I suppose. Then heading into what's uh, I suppose. At the end of the day, you're fighting for. You would be expecting Abby Dorney, let's say, to to be Parnells, but like that after after last Friday, it's not uh, that easy. But um, they'll be heading into a game against Abby Dorney, which is probably going to be for top spot in the group, and that's going to tell us a lot more of of where each team are standing. So like that, I'd say at the end of the day, they were just happy to get out with the with the victory, and um, I'm sure they took uh, some learnings from it as well. Like which is what I suppose every manager would always want to take is something to work on out of the game. Yeah, and I think Mort uh, Lixna will take a bit of sustenance from the fact that um, they were one of the few teams over the weekend, I know we'll probably discuss this in more detail, they were one of the few teams who weren't depending on freeze for scores. They got 11 points from play on the on the night against uh, Parnells, which was the equal best over the weekend uh, with Causeway. And they'll be delighted with their bench, because really it was uh, Kelton Malloy and Jamie Galvin who won them the game in the end. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, Ian, to finish up on, on this game, Parnells wouldn't have that much on the bench considering the number of players that are away. If they had a Darreen, well, obviously he'd be starting, or a Luke Chester. These lads, and Brian Lonigan in particular, who played with Kerry, they were huge losses with such a small panel in terms of experience. They have good minors coming up, and again, you'd know a lot about the club. Do you think that going forward, um, you know, with the way this, the format is this year, regardless of what they do against uh, Abidorni, they'll still have a preliminary quarter final to play, and that can only be good for them. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's the, I, I suppose, look, there, there's been a fair bit of criticism, I suppose, about the format of the competition this year, but it, it's the likes of the developing uh, teams like Parnells and, and, and uh, Crokes, I suppose. And uh, I was going to say Belly High, but Belly High aren't developing anymore. Um, but um, yeah, it, it's, it's ideal for them to get uh, more games at, at a higher level, I suppose, during the summertime. And look, uh, the other thing I would say then maybe about the game is that when the game was in the melting pot with two or three minutes to go and um, Lixnay were down to 14 players, it was Lixnay that stepped up, I suppose, and they showed the, the experience and the co composure, I suppose, to get those final two scores. And uh, that's maybe what uh, Parnells maybe were lacking in the end for a, a famous victory on their part. Absolutely. Spoken like a, like a Kerry manager would speak. You speak like a Kerry manager. Uh, you know, we've had the under-21s, we've had you at minor, and now we'll probably be putting you forward for senior later on, but uh, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Now we have our second game coming up, and uh, JC O'Shea, who's John C., who's our 
production man here and our everything uh, he puts keeps the show on the road um we'll now have our our second game and we'll discuss that um after we see some of the highlights uh out in belly duff in the league final they're having problems uh with trees but not today good work there now and it's back to ron and walsh again i think it was good work by darren all and ron and walsh this time from play they won uh, Ronan Walsh was involved with him last year. Um, so he's a player that Kilmoyle have a lot of faith in that he's going to develop into a fine holder, and he will. Good defending there by Dougie Fitzell. And the ball goes from... Ronan Walsh going to try an optimistic effort from a sensational angle. What a stunning score. So I'm sure when he had zero uh, from one free, he got a message out to him. You better score or you'll be get no supper tonight. Dara oh. Corridan tries a long ranger. The wing back brought into the far no, he's not, he's going short. Yeah, Colin Walsh plays it inside to the two man full forward line. Inside there is Philip Lucid Good and man. big Eric Walsh. Eric Walsh, can he get a score off Connor Fitzell? Eric does well wow. from a tight angle. An excellent score from Tom there's gonna be one minute of added time onto the 30. We've 29 played as Rowan and Walsh again gets away from Shamey O'Farnon. This could be another wonderful score. This is the Rowan and Walsh versus Philip Lucid. On a score is. <laughs> Tomas Gaynor, good play from the Ballyhide midfielder into big Eric Walsh again. Lovely pop pass by Gairn. Gairn has the pace to get away. There's a man to his left. Great defender by Flor McCarthy. Brilliant play by Fl Graham Slattery can't get there. Is Dara Carney going to get there before Bobby O'Connor? David McCarthy tries to get, but that's good play by Dara Carney. The fullback he's played very well. He finds Kieran Casey. The central, the central fulcrum of the Belly High defence has been excellent. Now, Phelan O'Sullivan, he's going to try from about eighty meters. That's this could be the first score of the second half. Phelan O'Sullivan what a points. We've forty minutes played here at Austin Stack Park, live and exclusive on Clubber TV. Here's Big Michael Lean now. Michael Lean lays it off. That's a lovely pass to Shamey O'Farrain up from the back. He takes on Flamer McCarthy. Foul. He's fouled. O'Farrain keeps going. Ref plays advantage initially. Sends it long in towards big Eric Walsh. What can Eric do? He goes up with the hand. The ball breaks. Michael Lean does have it. Can he get a score? He's been boxed up. Lays it back. Chance for Brian O'Reardon. What can Brian do from a tight angle? That's a wonderful score. Brian Dougie. Now it's with Jordan Brick. Brick is going to send it long again. He does. This is a one-on-one -on -one battle inside. David McCarthy gets it into his hand. Lays it off quickly to Philip Mansell. Philip, will he send it back to David? No. He turns. He gets away from Derek Carney. This would be a wonderful score. Philip Mansell, what a score from a tight. He's been everywhere. Walsh sends it long towards the full forward line. Well judged by Lucid. Inside Connor Fitzell. Great chance for Lucid from play. He must score. He does score. In He's, he's, Don Kennedy's marking him now. Here we go again. Tomas Gaynor sends a long ball in towards Philip Lucid. Philip Lucid under pressure this time from Dara Carden. And Flora McCarthy is in there battling with Eric Walsh. Who's got the strength? Philip Lucid's got the skill. It's not about, it's about, oh, great save, John B. O'Halloran. He went for it, goal. It wasn't about. They're not the usual Kilmoyle that we see. I wonder uh, if Vincent America affected them in any way, but not taking away. Here comes Philip O'Sullivan. Phelan, one brilliant point already in the first half. I think he's got another. An excellent score by Phelan. Oh, here's Liam Flaherty again. He's going to, he takes on Phelan O'Sullivan. Liam Flaherty's making a bit of an impact over the last couple this of minutes. Dangerous. He's got pace. He finds Philip Mansell. Philip's going to try and get in for a goal. What Ball's a played across. Who's going to get there? Kilmoyle have it in their grasp. John Godley laid it off. What can they do? They know a point isn't enough for them, but they win a free. That's a free one by Kilmoyle. This is the most important free of the day. I wonder, was he told by the referee that there's not going to be another play after this? That he didn't go for the point himself? The 33 minutes are up. Three minutes have been played. He played it in short. But great defended by Bally High. They've well, cleared their lines. The final have... whistle is blown. This wow. is Bally High have done it. 16 <laughs> points to 13. What a, what a start to the championship. We had Parnell's. So now there you've seen uh, Belly Haig cause a minor upset, let's call it like that, beating um, the uh, Kilmoyle, their neighbours, 16-13, uh, a game that was very tight all through until the final 10 minutes uh, when Belly Haig just edged in front. I'll start this time with Ian, and I suppose it's fair to say, Ian, uh, there was a number of players uh, missing from 
Kilmoyley and uh, some of them were in America tough times and hurling is not the most important thing let's say in Kilmoyley right now would I be correct? Um, that's right Murphy. yeah it was a difficult week for, for um, I suppose the Mahoney family in particular and, and the youngs that uh, John Paul he, he, he fell ill and um, yes it's a difficult time and just on, on behalf of the Kilmoyley Hurling Club I just want to pass on our best wishes to, to John, John Paul's family and friends I suppose and during this very difficult time and uh, we're just thinking of them all yeah. Yeah, thanks, and we all echo that here on uh, Clubber TV and the wider, the support as well from the wider hurling community uh, has been uh, very, very uh, notable and very well um, deserved. Now, uh, talking about the game, I suppose, um, Kilmoyley, um, I suppose Philip Madison's point was key. Uh, it put him in front, and after that then, they didn't... Uh, they were very dependent on Ronan Walsh. They didn't kick on, and it was uh, Belly High would be the hungrier side, wouldn't wouldn't they? And 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 they finished better. They did absolutely, and they they were full fully deserved of, of their win more to overall. Um, can you can't have uh, any complaints about uh, the result. Absolutely not. Uh, it was unfortunate, I suppose, that the game really was a, a game of freeze more or less. Uh, there wasn't any great flow to the game like some of the other games, but it, it, was, it was a close affair. Uh, both sides gave um, really great effort, but like I said, uh, Ron, I suppose, was our main scoring chief. He got 11 points, <coughs> excuse me, four from play. And then we, we, we know the forwards to score, I suppose. Um, and on the other side, then, I suppose, maybe discipline at the back. We gave away a lot of handy enough kind of a freeze, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, so Philip Lucid obviously capitalised on all those in and... He was a big man then inside Eric Walsh. He, he did a lot of damage uh, holding up play and he got scored a good point himself. And um, look, I suppose that maybe they were the more they seem to be the more determined team. They they haven't had a great uh, amount of success as far as I've seen over the last few years, but they've definitely been been on the upper um, upper curve. And um, they had a nice style of play. They had good running with the ball and uh, they carried it well and drew a lot of falls as far as really. But um, and then you had Colin Walsh, I suppose, who, who was superb then in this, that sweeper role again. Yeah, Aidan, uh, Colin Walsh, he really stood out. I know um, Philip Lucid would get the headlines uh, with his uh, free-taking, um, and uh, but overall, um, scoring 12 points or whatever he did, uh, Colin was crucial, and he's been injured most of the year, came back at the end of Kerry's campaign uh, in the Joe Mac, and... Uh, he really has brought it on to another level. Um, his distribution, his reading of the game, uh, he's ideal for that role, wearing number 15 back there. And he continued on in the second half doing it. He never, he might have joined the attack about once in the entire hour. He played well, didn't he? Yeah, like I suppose it's it's a close um, call between himself and Michael Ean as which one of them is their most important player. And they probably are both very important in two different ways, like from a point of view of the skill and everything that Colin brings to it, like he's obviously, I suppose, looking at him, they're, they're the opposites physically, I suppose, you know, that kind of way. Michael yeah. is the, the physical presence then. Um, Colin is like hugely important. We've always seen it all the way through. He's been the most important player in pretty much every team he's ever played on, really, like underage for Belly Haig. The skill he has is excellent. There was always a fear that he wouldn't be able to bring it to senior with the physicality, but it, it doesn't matter a jot to him, like he's super and like that. That plus one role is where, where, where we've been talking about all weekend. Like every team is playing it realistically. Now you end up playing it out of default most of the time because if your opposition is playing it, you're you're automatically playing it as well. Um, but he did really well there. And like that, the delivery of ball inside. And you can see the running off the shoulder then of Eric Walsh inside. Like it's simple stuff. Get the ball into the big man and offload it to a fella coming off the shoulder. Like, yeah. um, And they did it really, really well. Like they didn't get too technical at all. And I think the way they drove on, like it's it's not an easy thing to do against Kilmoyley. To drive on and get the five or six points in a row like that inside in town. I know they, they had the help of a, a breeze as well, which they used very well. A lot of teams inside didn't use it very well. Um so it's um it's a huge win. Like I don't think we can really I don't think it's been overestimated how big a win it is for Belly Hyde to beat Kilmoyley in town. Like that's massive for them. Like uh, the the only other win they had was in the last let's say this generation of players. Um, was the Licks now win there two, years two or, ago. Two or yeah. three years ago yeah. so yeah. like it's huge for them to win that and they'll be able to most likely follow that up with another win yeah. which is bigger again so yeah. it's going to set them on the way to heading into a quarter final with a bit of confidence which they haven't really had for a long time and 
be interesting to see what they can do with, with that behind them. Yeah, John, uh, Bally High got a lot of wides too. Uh, first half, I think they had four, and they had almost doubled that in the second half. So they missed a lot. Now, Kilmiley had a number of wides in the second half as well. Uh, but overall, um, do you think that the players, say, who were in with Kerry, uh, Shami Forn was in, Dara Carney, they're all young players. Obviously, we had the two boys that um, that, uh, um, that Aidan mentioned, Michael Lean and uh, Colin Walsh. So, and, and Philem O'Sullivan was there at midfield. He, he, he fired over two mighty points. Brendan Son, the manager son. Um, Barry Heiger, a team that you wouldn't want to underestimate. Yeah, they were fantastic. You'd have to say, as Ian put it there, like they totally deserved a victory. Now, on the one hand, Kilmiley probably weren't overly surprised that they struggled up front. They, were look, they looked at it beforehand and said, Daniel Collins and Mossy Connor are missing. They're our two best forwards, probably simple as that. We're missing Paddy O'Connor's energy around the middle of the field or the half forward line as well. We're missing Coleman Savage's physicality at full back. So from, from John Myler and Morris Mernan's perspective, the biggest thing that would have disappointed them was the over reliance on Rowan and Walsh up front. Like mm. none of the other five forwards scored on the day, which would be a disappointment because when fellas are missing, big names are missing, the other players have to go and seize the responsibility and uh and deliver instead. And only Ronan Walsh did it from a Kilmiley perspective. And I suppose something that might have been missing as well, a huge turning point, and um, we mentioned Michael Lee in there, he was kept relatively quiet by James Godley for three quarters of that match. And James Godley went off injured with about 15 minutes to go. And it was only really then that Michael Lee became a much uh, bigger influence yeah. uh, for Belly Hyde. So that's something to note. James Godley was having a fine game. Like Kilmiley would be happy enough defensively. They only conceded five points from play, so they know where they have to improve going forward. For Ballyhigh, it's just now about self-belief, self-confidence, like the boost they would have got. That's absolutely... And with as, as we said, there was a buzz around Ballyhigh before the match with the election. And uh, they, probably the unexpected victory straight away in his first outing of Michael Lean's father, Michael Sr. Are you so, sure it's not the son that won it? No? <laughs> well... D didn't you say last week that uh, Michael Lean Sr. promised the Nealis Flynn Cup? And uh, I suppose you could say he after did. the first match... But that match, was before he fell off the ladder. <laughs> I mean, yes. it was after he fell off the ladder. He's been, he's been true to his word in the first part of the journey anyway by getting a victory over Kilmiley. And that can only yeah. boost their self-morale going forward. Yeah. Now, the, I called Tommy last week. The brains of the panel, of course, here now is Ian uh, Brick. Ian, <laughs> looking at Kilmiley, they obviously have a week off now and I think they'll appreciate that. Uh, they're ending against uh, Dr. Crokes, isn't it? Um, Dr. Crokes, yeah. Uh, Crokes in the final game uh, the following weekend, and they're still they still be fancying themselves to go to the quarter final and even further. But I suppose in one way, this is kind of a wake up call for them. Um, they like winning, and they like winning the whole time. We know John Myler's philosophy. Um, so this is a temporary setback, but he'd probably use that to motivate them. Uh, for the rest of the journey. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, you know, I know that the lads rose again the following morning. They were in re recovery mode again, um, trying to to get the heads right, the bodies right, I suppose again. Um, even though they do have the week off, um, so that that would be hugely important. All right, yeah. Um, Crokes, I suppose, haven't had a great rec haven't had a great year uh, in the county league, especially and in in the championship the last few years. <clears throat> But look, that's going to be much uh, look at that. They'll be looking at their own performance, hopefully, and to try and improve on that. And look, James Godley, hopefully, he'll come around. Uh, but uh, Liam Flaherty, when he came in, he, he, did, he had a big influence in the game itself. So, look, he might be another man to, to, to look at um, in, in next week, I suppose. Yeah, great, yeah. So now that's uh, two uh, of the games, the four games that were played. We're on to the third one now. It's uh, Bally Duff and St. Brendan's. And what a cracker that turned out to be, but for Bally Duff. It turned out to be one at a cost. So we look at the highlights now of uh, Ballyduff and St. Brendan's. Looking forward to what will be a good test for both. Getting the ball up the field. Kyle O'Connor. Kerry Senior Hurler sending it inside here. It was Evan Boyle that was underneath it. It's going to break for Evan. Evan still going. Under serious pressure. Evan Boyle goes for the shot. Darren Delaney made that look fairly spectacular. It's going to be a free. Now he's going to have a look. He lays it on to Jack Sullivan. Jack Sullivan has his midfield partner running through with him. He lays it off to Segal. Segal will give it back to Jack again. Jack looking for Podge Boyle and Podge has it. He's going to give it back to Daniel Carroll who has a bit of space and time to shoot. And Daniel Carroll has sent it over the bar. Come away with it. Neil Mangan. Mangan looks up. Good block down there. 
the pressure but it still falls the way of Belly Duff and it's inside now it's Jack Goulding Goulding will look for the runner off his shoulder nobody really coming for him he sent a, a lovely little pass into the middle here Jack Sullivan has it Jack Sullivan oh it sent it up in the back of the net despite the efforts of Dan Delaney that was a fantastic run by Jack Sullivan and a great pass by Jack Goulding an absolute peaceful pass across uh, from Jack Goulding uh, Jack Sullivan made a great year last year though, especially in the because it got him into a fair bit of trouble and he got a clatter for uh, the matter as well it's sent inside here Podge Boyle feeding off the break here has he anybody outside him he's still going he manages to find Dylan Moriarty Dylan takes the shot but has and he oh, has sent it over the bar no he's going to take this free and sends a, a long crossfield ball looking for Dylan Moriarty Dylan not able to get it under control himself and Dahi Griffin take a tumble onto the ground the here ball. is Dara Slattery Slattery is going to have a go and is going to send it over the bar but eventually they're able to come away with it and now it's Nathan O'Driscoll O'Driscoll to try and go on a bit of a run here he's the the slitter on the hurley and he strikes it straight between the posts and an important score his second Oh, fantastic book out here. It falls the way of Fanon Egan. Egan off the left has sent it over the bar and Art Fort are starting to kick into gear. That was a massive score there because the ball broke down. And again, it's the second time he's put the hand down first time. Straight hand, he got a little touch then and off his left hand side, he put it over from about 46, 47 yards out. Great score. And it's a one point game going in at the break and after what was a very difficult half, I would say Jerry Wallace might be the happier of the two men going down the tunnel for now at the moment. Uh, it is one seven to nine points. A very interesting a, a half of two. Very quite so far. Arfort need to get him on the ball. Dahi Griffin is under serious pressure from Evan Boyle. He's looking across the field. He had an option. He's going to go inside instead. For now, Egan is going to try and get on this one. He does get onto the ball. Doesn't draw the foul that time. Hand passes into the middle here. Shame, sir. Halloran on the run here. Oh, Halloran has a chance. Oh, Halloran. Puts it Ooh, over the bar over. just about, but it's a good score. Could I say they're ahead for the first time in the match? Jack Goulding now will look to reply. He looked to get Belly Duff back in level terms, or can he do even better? Still going, Jack Goulding sends it over the bar and levels us up again. In each other's way as well here, Anon Ferris. The first time we've really seen him with the ball in hand. Running at his man, running at Daniel Carroll. Finds the pass in the middle here. It's Nathan Driscoll. Driscoll this time shoots, and this time Driscoll sends it over the bar. He was and unlucky, Joe. He got out ahead of Eric, got the ball in his hand, turned on to his strong, so a good strong left hand side. Yeah, he's got it short. Oh, he's going through again. And it's a chance now, maybe, for a goal this time. Goulding goes early, but you're not going to beat Dan Delaney from there. Delaney goes in with two feet almost to stop the ball that time. As in was coming Luke Rochford. And Rochford wasn't going to spare anything, I don't think. The referee is allowed to play on here and. Just as well he did, to be honest, because those are they're very 50-50 calls. O'Riordan gets the ball up the line. Will Shames O'Halloran get there? He just about keeps it in. Daniel Carroll, though, beats his man with a, a hefty shoulder. Gary O'Riordan sent to the ground there. This is going to go over the bar for him. Deep. In right still going. Well a fantastic flick from Nathan Driscoll. Adam Segal there is there to pick it up, though. Driscoll still going in and forces the turnover. And it's Gary Reardon that's up there now. And he has the ball. Reardon moving it inside. Seamus O'Halloran has it. Seamus with a chance to open the legs here. Has a massive strike as well on him. Has Seamus O'Halloran put it over the bar? He has. Seamus O'Halloran. Because nothing is really working for him so far. Jason Bowler is on the pitch in place of the goal scorer, Jack Sullivan. Is hard fought. Turn over the puck out here. What a huge score this will be. And it's gone over the bar from. Go straight into the clutches of Jack Goulding. And Goulding is going to reply instantly with a score of his own. Here, like. Shawnee Brosnan on the break here. It's a fantastic flick by Daniel Carley. Just stopped the pass and Dotty Griffin was in for a score for sure there. Carroll did very, very well. Here's Goulding again. What an addition to have back on Irish shores again. Jack Goulding, off he goes. Reminiscent of a run he made with Kerry one time. He's still going, Jack Goulding. Will he have oh. a better finish this time? Far 65. Oh. It's a good belt. Has he the accuracy for now? And it's dropping on the goal mouse and it's flicked away. Still there though. No foul given. Fair challenge, says the referee. Daniel Carroll, though, has worked it out here now to Jack Goulding. Goulding will look up and he will launch it just about. He was under pressure from Lee Mogo O'Connor. Can't find Rochford. For Shall we say? Jack Goulding with a chance to make it a two-point game. And he has done. 115 to 16 points. This here off the ball, but now he's that's going down. I don't know if something uh, that happened. It looks like a, maybe a cramp or something. They're getting on with it out first. James O'Halloran got a flick on it. It's still there. 
but the referee is going to blow the full time whistle and it is Valley Duff who will take the two points here in the opening group game Valley Duff 115 at Fort 16 points a very enjoyable second half bit. yeah and Joe's an enjoyable game overall you know like the So, we've just seen the highlights there of Ballyduff and uh, St. Brendan's. And Ballyduff just eking out a win there on a 115 to not 16 scoreline. But as you saw there from the highlights, the last five minutes of that was pretty hectic. And it just one way, then the other. And uh, St. Brendan's had a couple of chances there to uh, get something out of the game. And uh, Ballyduff can thank Jack Goulding, I think for getting them over the line. We'll start with you, John, on this one. A uh, good win for uh, Bally Duff, considering they lost uh, Podrick Vile, Podge Vile after 21, 22 minutes, and they started without Mikey. Uh, obviously, the two Vile brothers are key to Bally Duff and have been for a number of years now, for a decade, I'd say, nearly. So, um, overall, they'll be happy to have got over the line, will they? Yeah, I think this is a game where actually both teams and both sets of managements will be happy enough with what they saw at the weekend. Because on the one hand, when Bally Duff were leading after around 20 minutes by 1-7 to 3 points, and remember they were playing against the wind in the first half, it looked like it could turn out to be a disaster of an evening for St. Brendan's Ardfert. But they responded brilliantly with six points um, before the halftime whistle to go in only a point adrift. And that obviously gave them great confidence for the second half. Maybe you can say that Podge going off around 22 minutes was just the boost that St. Brendan's needed. And it did take away from uh, Bally Duff as well with missing Mikey, missing Owen Ross, then missing Podge. They were down what you'd say was a good few spiritual leaders. And the second half then, Bally Duff didn't play well with the win for long, long periods. St. Brendan's were well in the game. Maybe de depended a bit too much like some teams. Finan Egan, he was excellent on, on, on the night. A really young Top player. With, a really young player with savage potential. His, his, uh, his low centre of gravity, his, his skill set uh, with the slitter is fantastic to watch. But he got 10 of their 16 points on the night. Nathan O'Driscoll was fantastic at midfield with three and so was the substitute uh, Seamus O'Halloran with two. But the thing was, Bally Duff would have looked at it and said, with three of our big talisman missing, we need someone to step up to the plate. And as he did in the brilliant creation of the goal in the first half for Jack O'Sullivan, and what he did down the home stretch in the last 10 or 15 minutes, Jack Goulding was absolutely immense. When they needed a leader, he was that leader. And that will give him great confidence. Well, obviously, he's been uh, living in London for a good couple of seasons there. Now he's still there, but he's commuting over now for this championship. He was outstanding. But I think like St. Brendan's had chances to equalise after Jack put Bally Duff ahead before he got the insurance point for the two-point victory. So they'll be well pleased because St. Brendan's are a work in progress and they're trying to learn to survive without Finan Mackesy, who obviously, as most people know now, has gone to play with O'Loughlin Gales in Kilkenny. So for them, I think they'll take nearly as much encouragement out of the match as the winners did. Ian, uh, looking at uh, Brendan's up front and looking at Finan Egan, obviously having a son playing yourself, um, you know that, uh, and you remember obviously John, who was playing at centre back and had a very good game. But uh, everywhere you saw John when young Finan was only eight, seven, eight, nine years of age, he was pucking the ball around, very like uh, Mike Conway and Shane Conway was there. You know, those guys come along and they're special talents because since they were knee high to a grasshopper, they have been belting a ball in there in Austin Stack Park, even. Um, so uh, I suppose it's great now that he's come on the stage, he's the age, and he can perform like he did. Yeah, it, it's a, it, you just reminded me of something there. We, we had a match against um, St. Brendan's in Artford one day, and um, Funan was there, I don't know how many years ago, it was a good few years ago anyway. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you, you would have to take notice of him. He was like a wizard with the, the, the hurley in his hand and he, was, he had all the skills and all the, the rest of it. He, he didn't have the, the size that time, but yeah. he's definitely come of age, I suppose, um, with his performance um, last weekend. Um, to, to, to play like he did, I suppose, to be getting the scores that he did. Um, and I suppose it, it is a lot of responsibility for a young lad, but he certainly took it on. But um, you had... Um, uh, what's his name? Seamus O'Halloran came on and also did very well for, for uh, St. Brendan's there. Another young player. 
And I think they'd be pleased with that. Uh, they had at the back then they had the likes of Dahi and Derek, uh, two season campaigners. Best was. man marker, club man marker in the county, Eric. For me, he he's would be. Yeah, 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 he would be, and has been for a number of years. Yeah, yeah. and he, he's exceptional at the football side of it as well. But yeah. he has that burst of pace, and he'd like to get forward as well. So he's he's a nightmare for any forward uh, to be marking because you have to watch him uh, go forward as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, look, the, the two of them have been excellent for Kerry as well during the year. Um, so any future Kerry manager would be looking at those two players, wouldn't they? They would. Whoever they might be is right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Aidan, uh, tell me this. Uh, you know, Bally Duff. I mean, you probably are. You know, as an Abidorni man, uh, there must be a fair deal of envy there uh, with the amount of times the Duffers. I mean, they're never dead and buried until they are dead and buried. They're always around the place. They're just one. 25 that they have, and can only have 26. They're always there. They're going through an awful famine, of course. Yeah. An awful famine of yeah. about seven and years. Yeah, it's, 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 it's yeah, 2017 since they won it last, uh, which isn't as great as the famine. Although, looking at you, I don't think there's any famine in your life. Uh, so, uh, Aidan, um, tell me this. Uh, what did you think of Bally Duff? Um, I suppose, like Podge Boyle, this is a massive question mark. Like, um, He's definitely not going to be playing this weekend. Um, how fast they can get him back in the pitch. Like that, what about missing Podge, but to miss both Podge and Mikey at the same time um, is probably the difference between winning and losing a championship. Um, but Kevin Goulding played very well in that in that sweeper role, as, as we call it. Um, Dara Slattery played quite well, and Jack Sullivan in the middle, and then obviously Jack Goulding, I suppose the, the man that everyone will want to see them getting more out of is Evan Boyle. Didn't really feature at all in the second half, but he was kind of out the field, he, he never really settled into a role, whereas we thought, with the, with the breeze, myself and Pip doing commentary, we thought Evan was going to be inside, stand in the square, send the ball in down top of him, because a couple of balls went into him in the first half, mm -hmm. he caused a bit of havoc with, so we were disappointed he wasn't put in there, you know, send the ball down on top of him and uh, test out the for full back line, um, but it was kind of all about the younger guys in that game for both teams. Um, like it was, we were always kind of looking to see what Kyle O'Connor can do, um, Darius Slattery, um, and then for Ardfort, I thought it was like it's all about the young guys with Ardfort, like Tom O'Flaherty and Gary Reardon were very, um, very they, they stood out. Let's say they were, they made mm -hmm. their presence known on the pitch for for young guys. Um, Nathan Driscoll is probably playing the best hurling he's ever played in Central at the moment. Like he's really suited to the midfield role. And the three points he picked up were really important as well, and. Um, Fanon Egan then and realistically they there's way more to come from Shawnee Brodson and Nanon Ferris as well. So I think they'll be, you know, full of beans going into the next round in, into this weekend. Um and they'll be fairly fairly happy. I, I suppose the mood wouldn't have been great in the camp like having lost Fanon going into it. So to get a performance like that will give them loads of confidence and uh, hopefully they can carry that into into this weekend and get another big performance out and just see what happens and like that there's loads of games for them to stay playing their way into it and look they most likely find themselves in a quarter final and and see what happens from there yeah ian do you think that injuries particularly on the belly duff side of the fence uh if um, we believe mikey will be out for a few weeks and looking at podge limping towards the car the last evening um it would appear he'd be missing as well so is that a worry now coming up when they're playing? Because we'll be discussing that later, previewing it. But just in general, do you think injuries can be a, a big negative for Paddy Duff? Or have they enough uh, on the bench to, 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 to make up for it? Um, yeah, I suppose to start, the two boys would be would be huge loss for any team, really. They, they, they were last for the Kerry Scene Hurlers <coughs> excuse me, uh, this year, uh, never mind for a club team. You know? So um, it, it's how Paddy Duff got their heads around it, I suppose. Uh, seen Podge going off, off after 20 minutes, um, I, I, I suppose it, it did seem to affect um, maybe our St. Brendan's more than it did Belly Duff because it, it certainly drove on St. Brendan's. Um, but look, then again, injuries are just part of the game and there's no team that hasn't uh, been affected badly by, by injuries this year. So it's better, a matter of uh, next man up and, and stepping up to the plate and, and, and doing what needs to be done for the team, basically. Yeah, that phrase, next man up, that was the phrase used all year. By the Kerry senior hurling manager Stephen Malumpy, when we told him who was missing, and I ever asked him a question, he said, "Look, don't mind who's missing. It's who's here, and it's next man up." 
and there is Ian Brick taking on the same words and you can draw your own conclusions. <laughs> now, one, one of the things, Mark, just to finish yeah. on that was that Pally Duff will take a fierce encouragement from the fact that Luke Rochford, young Luke Rochford, came ah, off the yeah. bench, yeah. scored a point. J.P. O'Carroll came off the bench, scored a point as well. And like, the, like Aidan was saying about Evan Boyle, you do know that the, the skill set is there, the height is there, the... The hurling, the yeah. hurling is there, and like he could decide now, knowing that Podge is probably out for a couple of weeks, that he will take on the responsibility. He's that type of a young fella. He's always been a bit of a leader in the teams that he plays with. So I'd be expecting a lot more from him starting this weekend as well. Right. So that's we run out to the final game. That was the Sunday evening game, and what a cracker that was! And again, injuries and free taking come into discussion when we see the highlights of Cratonese, the champions going for two in a row. It took them a long time, mind you, to win one since 1968, but they won it last year. And now uh, they took on Causeway, the previous year's champions, and uh, follow the have a look at the highlights now, and we'll see and discuss after uh, the Crata and Causeway causes. It's very pronounced. This is a great puck out and well won by Billy Lyons. He gives it into Joe Diggins. Joe Diggins, the captain for Causeway, has sent it over the bar for their first score of the championship. He's back there. He's not a whole lot in front of him. This one goes long and it was Tommy Casey that was going up for it. It's won by Carmer Quite, who's already seen a good few possessions there. This shot over the shoulder from Jordan Conway has gone between the posts. That is an excellent. by Keith Carmody there. Carmody looking for a runner off the shoulder. He has Tommy Casey. Tommy gives it inside here in a bit of space now for Dan Goggin. Dan eventually gets it into his hand. We'll have a look at the post. We'll send this straight between them. Fantastic. Dan Goggin and Jordan. He sends it inside. It's Gavin Dooley and Dan Goggin both in there. Both carry forwards as well. There's an advantage played. Joe Diggins is making a run off the shoulder. He gives it to Dan Goggin instead. Dan Goggin with a long-range effort. Adam Sullivan saves it. And the free is awarded. But plus one for Causeway. I'd say he is, yeah. It definitely is. Uh, defence wouldn't be his normal position oh that's a great ball into the hands uh, can Tommy Casey make it count oh that's an excellent yeah. score by Tommy Casey yeah, and a lovely pass puck out straight to Darrow O'Donoghue O'Donoghue looking inside for Jordan Conway he has it does he he's, he's under serious pressure it's still there for Crotta and it's going to be tapped over the bar by the number 12 Shawnee McElligot and he knows who to pose sir exactly Cousins with Shane Nolan as well that goes long and spilt by Killian Trent. Looking for the free was Billy Lyons. A hefty challenge going in there and Joe Diggins. Keith Carmody is the man who has it. Carmody with an effort that goes over oh, the bar. An excellent yeah. score by Keith Carmody. I'd hear a bit of confusion, but Rory Mahoney, I'd say he might have actually been unsighted by the sun. He didn't realise the ball was uh, breaking that way initially. It's uh, back to Sean Beans where now. Beans is under pressure. He's spilt it. He's Cullum given Harty. it to Cullum Harty. Cullum Harty down on goal. And it's a great save again by Adam O'Sullivan. It's still there though. Dan Goggin. Can they get some score out of it? Surely fouled. That's the, the causeway side down. He's going to send it all the way across. Joe Diggins still going. Diggins with a strike. Blocked down again. There's a C of Crotta men in front of him. And another block again as he pulled on the ground. It's still there. Crotta can't clear their lines. Causeway causing all sorts of havoc. And eventually, Tommy is looking into that space where there's two Crotta men there. But it still falls the way of Cullum Harty. Harty is going to swing off his left. And he's Go going to bar. send it over the post. Yeah, and Cullum... We were in school. Was he? Here's Dan Goggin. Dan is going to strike this off oh, the left. Oh, what a score. straight over the bar. And Cormac White is going to go back to Tommy Casey here. Casey is going to look cross field. It's very high. Breaks the way of Dan Goggin, though. Goggin. He could put this over the bar is, with his accuracy. This is an excellent effort if it goes over. That is an unbelievable score from Dan Goggin. Shrakers the space here if they can get the sharp uh, free or the quick free taken. He's quite it's an excellent ball by Darrow Donahue and Killian Trent. Over the bar. He's going to send yeah. it over the bar. Yeah. And giving away a free yeah, like that to, to Shane Nolan here right in the middle of the goals. Shane picks and strikes and sends this straight between the posts for his seventh from freeze. He's seven out of seven in this first half. And they uh, sent Crata into a two-point lead, 11 points to nine. Dunico Callan, I imagine, is going to probably call for the ball. Yes, he is. Yeah. The long crossfield ball. There's one man in front of the Causeway man, who is Dan Goggin, who has taken it very, very well into the hand. Dan Goggin sends it over the bar. That is a sensational. Down into the ground, and they're still struggling to get a clearer Causeway in the backs. And Brandon Barrett lost the hurley. He went with the foot. It's still going to break the way of Crat O'Neill's. It's the number five, Killian Trent. Killian will have a look at the posts. Off his That's right side, Killian Trent has sent it straight between them. Ah, uh, beating back there. 
Absolutely. He's doing the job very, very well, that's for sure. This is just not going to pop into the hand. Eventually, Dan Goggin collects it, and Dan Goggin has... Oh, he's just gripped it inside. <laughs> and Dan Goggin, they're, they're sending the ball into him. He's outnumbered almost every time. I know he's making some of them stick, but... Uh, you can't imagine him to win every single one, although he's battling away there in there again and eventually coming away with it. Tyg McKenna is under ferocious pressure. Oh, Dan Mahoney has picked it up. Dan O'Mahony has sent it over the bar and Causeway in on top of the 21. Shane Nolan's underneath it. Shane Nolan has it in the hand. Shane Nolan looking for his first score from play. And oh, Shane Nolan goes. has his first score from play. It's his 10th. Oh, it's a fantastic strike over. by Evan Murphy. Falls in on top of Adam O'Sullivan. Goal chance. They can't make it count. Dan Goggin on the rebound. He got a fair bit of Keith Carmody's hand as well in the process. Yeah, he's it going back to say breaks sorry away about of that Shane team. Nolan. Shane Nolan on the run here now. Has Jordan Conway inside. He'll find Jordan. Chance to finish it here. Jordan Conway finds the back of the net. And most probably the two points Crotter will want to start off this championship campaign. Yeah, that ends all dreams. Of here. This will be Tiger Woods. Or Almost on his own 45. That is some belt of a ball. It's gone over the bar. That has gone all the ah, ways over the bar from that's Shane an Nolan. Incredible score for this stage yeah. missing. You know, Shane yeah. Nolan has an effort here from plays uh, sent it cross field to Jordan Conway. It's a oh, great ball. Conway on the run here. I'm There's Declan Dunahu inside. Oh, Conway went from fair distance. John Mike Dooley was equal to it. Evan Murphy trying to get across to Declan Dunahu. Dunahu is carried it out. Uh, writing next to his name on the programme which is a candidate but I think there's another candidate probably in the backs for Krata as Tommy Casey has an effort here it's over the bar Tommy it's has it. put it over the bar for Ian Causeway 15 points the scoreline probably much bigger than you know on reflection I suppose the last 10 minutes is when Krata really pulled away so on we had the county champions making a successful start uh, opening round win there over Causeway in the fairness to Causeway it's uh, was that goal chance probably they had from Evan Murphy's sideline cut. If that had gone in, it could have been a, a different game. And obviously, um, Crotter, Shane Nolan had an outstanding game. And uh, you had, of course, Rory Manny playing the role. We were talking about Colin Walsh playing and, and, and the dock for Parnells, you know, that, that plus one or sweep or whatever you want to call it. All that meant that, but it was tight for a long, long time. And Causeway... Despite losing Gavin Dooley after 10 minutes, Aiden, that was a huge blow to them. And most of the scoring then fell on the shoulders of Dan Goggin and he fairly delivered. He's in great form. So how do you read the game? I, I suppose that's it. Like the, the injury to Gavin, while it probably wasn't uh, an immediate point of change in the game, mm -hmm. whereas it probably was in the big rough game when Podge got injured, our foot mm -hmm. straight away lifted, you know. Um, this was it was more the last fifteen minutes they really felt the loss of Gavin when Dan was inside kinda, you know, plowing his own furrow like really doing very well at it. But he would he just had no one he didn't have the support and all the attention was on him, whereas if you have the two of them inside, you know, two guys yeah. have to be marked, so it makes both their jobs a lot easier. So that was where they, they eventually started to miss Gavin, what was towards the end of the game. But I suppose the fouls they gave away, like when you think of it, Shane only getting, uh, was a 13 from Freeze, I think, or 12 yeah. from Freeze, 13. 13 for Freeze. Like Jordan Conway drew so many fouls as well. Like Jordan and Shane drew a lot of fouls in very score, scorable positions. Um, the backs, like they, they were exposed for, for Causeway. But yeah. like Is that, that a discipline missing. problem back there? I, I think it's just that they're, they're down so many. Like, you know, I, I wouldn't blame them at all. Like they probably had to make the fouls when they did. Like, yeah. like when you look back at them, they probably weren't bad fouls to give away they just had no choice and yeah. um, they were like they're, they're so cut out like I mean we we're talking so much about it when we were trying to think of replacements for Morrish and Jason the first man we thought of was Anthony Feely then we learned on the day that Anthony isn't going to be playing so um, like it's and then to lose Jordan again so like they're they're very exposed now at the back just numbers wise so that that's probably the difficulty there and they just don't have the strength and depth that uh, they probably once did in that in that regard um, but Krata, I suppose, just really professional. I suppose in the end, um, the puck outs, killing, killing Trent, winning long puck outs, pushed up wing forward, um, made a huge difference. And um, that goal then was was the deciding factor. Causeway created three or four goal chances, couldn't take one. Krata created one and took it. You know, so that's yeah. 
Yeah. That's kind of the difference. It's the difference, yeah. Ian, uh, looking at Crossfire, obviously everybody looks at the county champions and see how they're going, but Bill Keane apparently has gone to America. How, for how long, I don't know. He was missing. Sean McGrath, who had a great league final against Kilmoyley, as you know, um, and you saw it probably against Kilmoyley, and um, they were impressive enough that night, although Kilmoyley came right back to within a point and indeed could have uh, got something out of it, but didn't. Do you think they're as strong as last year, or is it too early to tell? No, oh, it is. It's definitely too early to tell. Uh, they they had a really good uh, league campaign. They they finished top of the table. They had a superb semi final against uh, Ballyduff. Uh, it was a six goals they got. I think uh, Jordan Conway getting three of them. Um, so there's there's huge room for improvement. Um, like uh, they they were exceptional against Kilmoyle in that uh, county league final for the first twenty minutes, um, and it wasn't even that they took their foot off the the, the pedal. They they almost um, they were the masters of their own decline because they, they just a bit of poor passing and poor decision making. They left Kilmoyle back into the game, um, but I, I suppose the one thing that winning the championship and winning the county league now back to back will will give them certainly plenty of confidence, especially their their younger players. They again like that. It's, it's a panel game now. I'm not sure how many they had lined out the last day, but every fellow is going to gain huge uh, confidence from last year. Um, saying that, um, I suppose losing Gavin Dooley was a big loss for cause. Uh, um, like Aidan said, and Adam Sullivan made two really exceptional saves early in the game or the first half anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so look. It, it could have been closer, but I think uh, Crosby will get, get better, I suppose, as the campaign goes on. Um, like I said, maybe about the players who are heading away, that has to be seen yet. But look, um, maybe the injury to Beans might be a factor as well down the road. And um, it'll certainly be interesting, but Crosby will be happy 119 is, is decent scoring against the good Causeway side too. Yeah, and John Causeway, if you look at them, they have Anthony Feely definitely to come back in. Uh, they've obviously lost, we'd say, Jarlene probably for now, and Gavin Dooley. Uh, but also you have Paul McGrath, who was suspended for this game. I think he was sent off in the quarterfinal last year. Then you serve it in your opening championship game of this year. So Paul will be back. Um, but uh, Tommy Casey has returned. He missed last year completely. Um, and that's a good half-back line. Evan Murphy, Keith Carmody and Tommy Casey. Um, but I worry about them up front. Colm Hartley's had better games. Obviously, he's moving to the veteran stage, but he's very fit. And obviously, you don't give him room because if he gets by you and, and he's not uh, tackled or hooked or whatever, he can punish you. So really up front at the moment, it's Dan Goggin. I remember meeting John Mike Dooley on the way out. He's saying, <laughs> maybe I might have to come out field some goals. <laughs> now, John is around Mike Dooley. He's definitely older than Ian Brick. And, uh, he's not. He's, a couple of, he's not. <laughs> he's not. <laughs> you're that old. I'm, All right, I'm nearly as old as you were. He's 50. So, yeah, you're only a couple of uh, years off the free travel. So. But, yeah, uh, John, what do you think? How can they solve? I think at the back, they'll, they'll sort things out. But up front, I'd be worried about them if Gavin Doody isn't around. Yeah, I suppose a big, a big issue uh, for Causeway now with the loss of so many players, especially, like you say, at the back, the Murray Delaney's and Jason Dickens's, and now you've lost one of your marquee forwards in Gavin Dooley up front. I suppose they'd nearly they'd love to have Brandon Barrett who could play in two positions. Yeah. They'd like him to he be able to play. He's a broken finger or a thumb or something. They'd, 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 probably so, like, yeah. uh, they'd probably like Brandon to be able to play at the back. I know he did a bit of the plus one role as well at times of the game last weekend. But they'd probably love him now to be able to go in maybe uh, centre forward or full forward or somewhere to give a good dig out to the likes of um, Colm Harty and Dan Goggin. Like Dan yeah. Goggin, you'd have to say, is probably player of the weekend even though yeah. he finished on the losing team because he got five points from play and nobody, nobody did as much as that uh, in, in an individual contribution over the weekend. So his, his battle this weekend with Kyle O'Connor, I know we'll be going on to that in the while for the previews, that'll be uh, a mouth-watering tussle between the two of them. Two very pacey, skillful, low centre of gravity uh, hurlers. That'll be fantastic. The thing with Cosby, though, they have experience, Mert. They have, a, they have a fine manager in Stephen Goggin. Like he, he, he's been around the block. He knows what it's like. He knows this group of players really, really well. You I think another man who would like to manage Kerry? Potentially. I yeah. suppose we'd have to ask the man himself when we get the, the next opportunity to talk to him. But yeah, he has been mentioned in dispatches as a very 
creditable candidate alongside alongside others who are not too far away from us this evening. So um, yeah, that remains to be seen. Aiden what the, Lee, he has. That, that's, <laughs> that remains to be seen what the county board do over the next few weeks and months. But yeah, you'd never be right off Causeway. Like they're champions two years ago. They are they are down bodies at the moment. But then again, most teams are. And like we didn't even mention their Crota are without Barry Mahoney for the whole championship. And like like we say, are they better than last year? And it's too early to tell. But any team is going to miss uh, Barry Mahoney as well. Right, so that's a wrap on last uh, weekend's action, the opening round. And despite the fact of some people's, I suppose, um, you know, abhorrence might be too strong a word, but certainly dubious they were of this championship with, uh, with the format, it appears that the extra games are going to do teams well, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, they, they'll improve a lot from the games. And the other thing I suppose is that uh, it gives teams like Parnells and Crokes and other teams uh, a chance to uh, sample the big time without too much jeopardy and they still have a preliminary round to, to go if that's where they're going to end up. So overall, um, the games were tight. There was no um, sort of uh, hammering got by anybody. Uh, and all the games were nearly decided in the last 10, some of them in the last five, and even some of them in added time. So it was a uh, an interesting opening weekend. And uh, we are here, uh, kindly thanks to Breed McElligot in the John Mitchell's fabulous upstairs meeting room here. We're looking out at Casamain Mountains behind us. They have a robot out cutting their pitch. And if he comes in here, we're in trouble. Uh, because we'll have to move doing the There's carpet. enough cutting going on in here, I'd say. We live another robot. <laughs> we need another robot. Yeah, we don't need another robot. They've got me. Yeah, so uh, that's the end of the uh, of the look back, but we're going to be looking forward at the fixtures at the uh, weekend. And remember, they're all live on Clubber. So on Clubber TV, get your annual pass or buy the individual games whichever way you want it but you're going to be busy for the rest of the year watching and we're doing these previews on Wednesdays looking forward and looking back so it's a good package and I'd urge you to get involved whether you're here locally or abroad and some of the players obviously there's so many abroad there should be a good few subscriptions because uh, a lot of the lads uh, there's nine nine from one club gone I think or eight so yeah that's what's happening. So we're on now to the previews of uh, next weekend's fixtures. And we're starting on Friday night. And on Friday night, we have Ballyhigh against Crokes. And just uh, to make sure that uh, he will be honest and upfront with us, I'm going to give that game to Ian because he loves Ballyhigh. He walks in Banner. If you follow him on Instagram, uh, himself and his dog um, are absolute uh, heroes. Are you know if he was on TikTok, he had a million followers. The beautiful Banistrand. Sometimes it's lonely Banistrand from Kilma uh, Kilmiley win lose, but most of the time they're winning. So it's a good Banistrand. So and Bally High is officially claimed now for Kilmiley. <laughs> yeah, that won't cause any trouble. And just to add that uh, he doesn't walk Bally High Beach that much because that's where the hurlers are. Ian, Belly Hagen, Crokes, I suppose, look, let's be honest, Crokes are going to give it everything. They're determined, they're organised. Patty Flo Connor has done a great job with them. But the fact that Charlie Keating, who started to carry on the 20 team and was brilliant last year in the Holland Championship with them, is not playing with them, that's a huge blow. It is, yeah. And um, like I said, they haven't had a great uh, County League campaign. But I suppose, it, a bit like uh, Parnell's, um, when you're heading into your first uh, championship game, um, you just have to be open minded, I suppose. Now, Crocs are there a couple of years, but they're still relatively new to the, to the County Championship setup. Um, I think they're still looking for their first senior County Championship win, are they? I, yeah, I, I think, uh, they are, yeah. I think, yeah. yeah so, yeah. look, they have, they have a lot to play for. Um, they'll obviously, you, you'd imagine that they're going to be very fit. Um, uh, at times, I suppose their their hurling can let them down, but they will be certainly fit. They'll they'll give it um, they'll give it plenty. Uh, once Belly High aren't complacent, which I don't think they will be, they'll be very focused now after last weekend. Um, you would imagine Belly High should should come out on top, um, but look the cha the championship I suppose it, it throws up the odd um, surprise, but um, I, I I can't see a surprise here to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, Aidan, um, you have Mark Herfernan who takes the freeze. You have Connor uh, here from Port Tumna. 
uh, he'd be experienced. And then the locals, you have Dermot Quirk, you have Tom Doyle. Um, they were Kerry Cena panelists this year and uh, Nathaniel Dunsell. Um, and of course, the manager's son, Brian O'Connor, he played underage with Kerry. I know I saw him playing minor and quite a useful player he is. Uh, Mike Lennon, of course, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is a, a fabulous player. Uh, but uh, he hasn't been blessed with fitness the whole time because he's been injured. And uh, I think their their captain is is it Jamie Murphy. Um, he's a brother of Kilkenny goalkeeper Owen Murphy. So we'll throw that into the mix as well. Uh, can you see them um, giving a good performance? Can you see them winning? Bally Hyde, obviously, as you said earlier, on the Crystal Wave now, having got that win over Kilmiley. Yeah, I, I think, to be fair, Bally Hyde are probably just gone on to... Uh, they're well above that level now. I would say they've developed into you know being a much better consistent team. Crokes have probably regressed, unfortunately, from from the last couple of years. They've just lost too many. Um, yeah. So I would I would expect Bally High to, yeah. to take care of business. The manager Pat O'Connor was telling me when I spoke to him as well that their problem is uh, the lack of players from within the club coming through themselves, like in our Kerry. When a lad, we were talking earlier about Fionn Egan and, and these lads, you know, they catch a hurley and a slitter at six or seven years of age or even younger, but they're playing it up along in 12s, 14s, etc. Uh, and these lads are not exposed to it because basically croaks, you know, football is the yeah. one in croaks, but I mean, they that's, do promote hurling. That's where you look at panels like where they've built from the bottom up. Croaks are trying to build from top down. You know, yeah, yeah. and it, 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 it's going to be very difficult for them to stay going. I really hope they stay going because you don't want to see a team drop out. So you hope that they can just keep going, keep going. Hopefully bits of interest. Obviously they rely heavily on fellas moving into Clarney. You know, a, a lot of guards generally play with them and fellas yeah. working with Lieber and stuff like that. Like to hopefully they can stay bringing in some outside fellas to keep them going. And if any young fellas have interest, hopefully they'll 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 pick it up as well. But um I hope they put in a good performance. Like I hope they don't have to go in to face Kilmoyley off the back of, of a hammering from Belly High because that will be fairly, fairly tough on the psyche. It will, yeah. Why don't you like guards? Were you ever under one or anything? I just you remember now, you're in the back. Traditionally, so you that's... can't be. Okay, right. Yeah, I'll leave you off with that one. John, uh, listen to me. Uh, I suppose, look, this is more about Dr. Crokes than about Bally Haig. And uh, can you see them, can you see how they struggle without having that huge underage structure or pick from within their own club but at the same time to have the ambition they're only five four or five years in the senior grade as far as i can remember uh, so look if they can over the next couple of years build and build like uh, what they want to happen i suppose is to try and set some base some starting point whether it's a 10 point loss or a five point loss or whatever but it's about performance, isn't it? And about going forward, building a base. Yeah, I suppose they have to just look to last week as well and look at the example from Tralee Parnells. You know, if they need any bit of inspiration to get themselves motivated for the weekend, it's obviously going to be difficult. Look, Valley Hyde or cock a hoop after what happened uh, last Saturday against Kilmiley. Look, I, I don't think we need to beat around the bush. Like we know probably 99% certain that Valley Hyde are going to win this game on Friday night. But Dr. Crokes, they have to look to be competitive. They have to look to be in the game for as long as they can possibly be in the game. Do you know, maybe if we do have a breeze on, on Friday night, it will be very important for them to win the toss. There's rain forecast for Friday. <laughs> yeah, so it could be a windy, rainy night. That might be a bit of a Monsoon leveler. Monsoon rain, would that help? Yeah. What, what, that, that might help. What I would say is Dr. Crokes have never been blessed with the weather in Tralee <laughs> anyway, for any of their championship yeah. games. Yeah, like that might, never uh, got a dry day. That might be, be a bit of a leveler like, uh, for Dr. Crokes. Like if, if, they were to, if, if it was to be a bad night, if they were to win the toss, in the first half it would probably mean that there would be some bit in contention going into the second period you know that's all they can do yeah. they know they're up against it they're against a team with a huge momentum but like, and they're always going to be the lesser relation in the Dr. Crocs club like you know that's obviously going to be the case like they're the biggest probably the biggest football club in the county of Kerry so hurling is always yeah, going to be on, no, is always going to be the second relation there for um, but it's great that they're competing as Aidan says like it's why we have a 10 team championship is because of Dr. Crokes and Tralee Parnells take them away and you've just got the eight of the teams who are playing against each other all, all the time you know so um, yeah. I think what will be interesting for this game is just where, where will the Valley High play Colin Walsh this week will there really be a need for a plus one 
against uh, Dr. Croak. So they might just go man on man at the back, uh, try a different uh, formation because that might stand them in good stead going forward if they have different game plans. Yeah, I think uh, Colin could end up at midfield maybe with uh, Phelan O'Sullivan and work uh, from there, but uh, he can also cover the back. Uh, Ian, just a final point on that. How important it is you being eight, uh, I was going to say all Ireland medals, but eight county championship medals and, and uh, a great hurling man, despite your liaison or brief as it was with cricket. Um, so uh, as uh, a man who, and, and, and managing teams and coaching them, how important is for town like Killarney? We have Tralee now with Parnells in. They said it wouldn't happen. It started juvenile and they built up to, to intermediate, now senior ranks. How important are, would Killarney be better with maybe Kilgarvan in? Because I don't think Kilgarvan and Kinmare will ever join up. It's just local rivalry doesn't allow that there maybe. Because Kilgarvan had great intermediate teams and great hurlers, John Mark Foley, Gerald Finnessy, uh, you know, great, great lads. But uh, yeah. um, do you think it's important to have Killarney involved or a big town? It's huge. Uh, Mort, um, look, it, I suppose it's well known that uh, our, our player base is very limited in North Kerry, really. And um, it, it shows with the county panel, I suppose, then that you're, you're limited with your numbers and turnover with injuries, you're struggling. So, look, any way that you can build up the, 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 the player base is, is hugely important. And the, the most obvious place to go, obviously, is the big towns. Um, Parnells, is, they, they have good numbers inside, but they still find it obviously difficult with other sports and Crooks will find it harder again. Um, it's the travel again, I suppose, to, to North Kerry to get any decent games. Um, and it's the same with Kinmare and Kilgarvan. And obviously, the, the fact... I suppose the last few years that they've been successful at club um, at months level and, and uh, all Ireland level, mm -hmm. it, 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 I suppose it's easier to, to be successful uh, for those clubs that f f playing football than it is at hurling. And I suppose it's more of a carrot for them. But look, I suppose the, 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 the struggle goes on for, for hurling and it's hugely important that uh, we have those uh, clubs coming through. And anyway, I suppose that uh, the county board can, can assist them in any way. Uh, will be benefit to all the other clubs in our career. It'll just raise the bar. Yeah, and Aidan, to finish on that, it wouldn't it be great if you could have Lou Crowley, for example, playing, who plays with his, uh, Glenn Blessman, who plays for Redmore, uh, an intermediate hurling this year, I think they were junior last year, yeah, um, playing senior hurling. I mean, uh, yeah, he hurled probably... with Kerry and, and, and some of the, the lads from uh, Kilgavan as well. They should be involved in a county championship. Yeah, it's Any probably Redmore, big yeah. time, I'd say, needs to be looked at because they've done a pile of work, to be fair, and like that when the junior there, a couple of, was it last year? Last year, And yeah. um, like in East, I know there used to be, was it St. Pat's East Kerry or whatever used to be there? Yeah. Maybe it is a case then they're looking at a sort of an, like an East Kerry sort of almost divisional side like you know mm -hmm. um you know whether whether the North Kerry clubs would be delighted about that prospect or I, I don't know like uh, is it you know you don't want half a county either on the other side you know you want to keep it some way um oh. like I think Crokes and Rackmore definitely as, could a, look at as a ecumenical gesture surely you don't mind what South Kerry and Kinmare and Kilgavin you would not be afraid of them in Abidoni, would you? I suppose you would always hope that Kilmer and Kilgarvan, were, Kilgarvan especially, would, would stay on their, stay mm. going on their own. But yeah. I think uh, this year as well, I don't know if the numbers are as uh, big as they were over the last couple of years, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, John Mark Foley has moved up I, I think now, Kilgar yeah. Kilgarvan, for me, had probably to, to do with like the Donald, Donald Donald Sullivan. He's probably one of the best orders in the county. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. And he's kind of... Yeah. Unfortunately, not picking up a hurley at the moment. Um, but look, you look. There's always kind of ways. That, I know there was plenty of minor teams as well. Like it was probably a bit more unfair, I suppose, at underage level, uh, than it would be at senior level to to have. Like there was a South Kerry team which was Kimmer, Kilgarvan, Crokes, and I'm sure there was a couple of boys from a few other clubs around there thrown yeah. into the mix as well. Yeah. Like which at underage level was probably a bit much. Um, yeah. But it's something that they, they probably should uh, and could look at going forward, like just to make sure that there is a presence from, from outside North Kerry. Yeah, we always had uh, players from South Kerry and East Kerry on the Kerry Senior Hurling team. Any manager who would be taking over Kerry would be interested in. Like back in the day, the East Kerry uh, tra uh, coach uh, and trainer, Jerry O'Sullivan, David Kerry, and was a fine hurler. So it's, it's gone back a long time, and you had the McGarrells from... Uh, and McIntyre's from Kinmare, so there's good history there. 
Now we'll move on to Saturday, and we have a double header in Austin Stack Park on Saturday. John, we'll go through these now a little bit quicker. We would just want to give Crokes because we had mentioned them last week very much. Uh, a little bit of a, a an extra uh, an extra mention there. Causeway and Ballyduff. We've already discussed how Ballyduff are missing a number of players. How Causeway are uh, not helped by injury as well. So this game is probably. Um, a battle of two fairly even teams uh, with major players missing, obviously. But Yeah, I was just going to say it's probably the real 50-50 battle of the entire weekend. Both missing some key players. Um, one coming off a win, one coming off a loss. So it's probably more important for Kilmoy or for <laughs> Kilmoyley, for Causeway, that they can turn around this week because they, they, they wouldn't want back-to-back -back defeats. On the other hand, Bally Duff will know that their last game is against Crotta. And the way Crotter are moving at the moment with momentum building from last year, they're going to be a tough nut to crack, I think, in every game uh, throughout this championship. I think it's going to could well come down to the individual battle between Kyle O'Connor and Dan Goggin. Both were important players for the Kerry Senior Hurling team this year. Both are very fast, both very skillful. Um, that could be a fascinating tussle because obviously with Dan Goggin's five points from play last week for Causeway, if Ballyduff succeed in putting the shackles on him, you'd be wondering where the score is going to come from for Causeway with Gavin Dooley out. Colin yeah. Harty will obviously have to up his game from last weekend, but he's more than capable of doing that. I think Ballyduff might just shade it, but that's not with any great degree of certainty. And uh, you'd have to say that uh, Causeway will be giving it everything to avoid successive defeats. You can make any Friday and slips on this panel. But mentioning Ken Miley and Causeway <laughs> in one sentence is one that cannot be made. Am I right, Ian? Oh, look, I suppose you could easily make that mistake, John, so I'll look. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right, no Causeway and Benny <laughs> Duff, Ian. Um, yeah, an interesting game. Uh, like John said, um, I suppose, it, unfortunately, injuries are going to play a huge uh, part in the game which is a pity uh, so early in the championship. But um, Ballyduff probably have a little bit more momentum, the fact that they won their first game. And yeah, um, Jack Golding will be a factor, I suppose, for Ballyduff. And then you have Dan Goggin. So maybe which, whichever defence can cope better with those forwards, I think. Um, Tommy Barrett, I suppose, is just has got a, a game, a major part of a game under his belt now. So he'd be a good addition for the Causeway defence there. Um, I, I probably would just go maybe one or two points for Ballyduff to, to come through, maybe, I think. Yeah, and uh, uh, Uaden, um Paul McGrath, looks like he'll be back. The suspension is up in anyway, providing he's fit enough to play. Not too sure what the story is with Anthony Feely. Geraldine will probably be gone, as will Gavin Dooley. So, if they got Anthony Feely back... I don't uh, think he's going to be. From what I've heard, anyway, Anthony won't be there for any of the... Maybe not even a quarter-final. Right, OK. So, yeah. You heard the inside line. But uh, Tommy Barrett came on and did very well. And so did the uh, Leahy, mm -hmm. uh, Kieran Leahy, was it? Kieran, yeah. yeah. Did, did so how do you think it'll go? I think, um, like I sat here last week and said the cause were probably very close to winning the championship. And you sat there then after Sunday and you're probably thinking, Jesus, it's over, like, you know, after losing Gavin and, and Jord as well, like, because the cover at the back is so sparse. But look, it's it's against Billy Duff, they're going to be majorly up for it because they are backs against the walls. It's when they're at their best, really. It's when they're when they're cornered in a situation like this. They're playing Billy Duff. Uh, Stephen Goggin's going to have them lifting for what, what can take to the pitch. They will be lifting. Um, I do think Billy Duff will... It, it could be similar to the Crotty game where the last 10 minutes, Billy Duff just pull away because Causey won't have the depth in, in the panel to, to, to stay with them. Kieran and Tommy, you'd imagine, should be starting in the absence of... Um, all the rest of the injuries. I think Mark Murphy is someone they really need to have back as well because, like, he he's experienced and he's really really fit as well. Like, you know, yeah. to, for a fellow who's played for so long, you throw him on there. Like, he does a job. Like, they need a guy like him, even if it's to come off the bench for the last fifteen minutes. Um, he's important to have back as well. They definitely need Paul McGrath back. They need everyone they can get back. Let's face it. Um, Killian Dooley could come in as Killian, well. Too, Killian, yeah. a, a fine man to pick up a few points as well. Uh, in fairness to him. You mean um, he drinks? <laughs> no, first he scores few as well. All right. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, but that's it. Like it's all those, all the guys. Let's say fellas who wouldn't have major championship experience will probably get chances. You know, hopefully it's it's not a case of more injuries on the Causeway side. But there there will be guys probably. Um, they won't be debuts, but um, they they'll be playing, uh, games whereby they probably wouldn't have much much time in town before. 
Um, they'll yeah, be really right. up against it. I think they'll they'll give a really good showing for maybe forty five minutes, but uh, the injuries, the what they're missing, are just telling the end. I think Belgium. So you're going for Belly Dove. Yeah, I think Belly Dove will win. Took yeah. a long time to tell me that, but thanks <laughs> anyhow, for your skillful analysis. Right, the next one, seven thirty, is St um, Brendan's against the champions Crater O'Neill. John, uh, St Brendan's. Obviously, we spoke about Fionn Egan already. We spoke about Eric Lean Dahi at the back. You know the performance at midfield by Nathan O'Driscoll. Fanon Horgan was in there from the start. He played very well. I wonder would Darren Deneen come back? Um, what the story is with him, I have no idea. I have no update on that. But, uh, and then Crotter, of course, without, um, without uh, Sean McGrath. And, uh, you know, uh, Bill Keane not around, I would say. Um, how do you see this one going? You'd imagine St. Brendan's might bring Shamie O'Halloran now into the starting team after the way he played the last yeah. day. They'll need to give more support to Fanon Egan up front. That will include Iarnan Ferris, Sean Brosnan, Graham Horn as well, who's like a fine player on his day. Like, they'll all need to contribute a bit more on the scoring front uh, if St. Brendan's are to win this one. Um, I do think Crotter will probably still have the edge. Um, Shane Nolan uh, is so reliable and like there will be a certain amount of freeze and you can nearly bet your bottom dollar that he will convert the vast majority of them. Like Jordan Conway is flying at the moment. If he does get goal opportunities, he's arguably one of if not the best finisher in the county when it comes to raising the green flag and they're so, just so very solid at the back Mark like even without Sean McGrath last day even without Bill Keane they're, they're, he's going to be missing though he's, yeah, he's, he's a yeah. they have a they have a strong panel as well though and it's, it's just in general you know when you're on a winning momentum when, when the, the pendulum is, is swinging in your favour and you've got the added self confidence of being there and doing it, which they did last year, winning that county league final a couple of weeks ago against Kilmoyley when it came right down to the wire. Do you know usually victories are followed by more victories, and I still think that'll be the case for Crotter this weekend. They can edge it, but St Brendan's again will be hoping for a similar performance to what they produced against Ballyduff. Yeah, that's uh, that's fair going, John. Um, Ian, what do you think about St Brendan's and Crotter? Would you be a Crotter? A Crotterman here in terms of you think they could win it? Just about. I think I'd have to go along with what John has said there really. Yeah. Um, it will be interesting to see how, how Crotter go for the back without Beans. He's been the season campaigner with them for years and years. Mm -hmm. uh, always very reliable. So look, his, his influence will be a big loss for them. Um, on the other side, then uh, Fiona Egan, who did ex exceptionally well last weekend, he's, he, he'll be numbered now as well, I suppose. And... Um, Crotter, are, 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 they are good at the back. Uh, so if, if they can look after Fionn, I suppose they'll go a long way towards um, keep the, the, their scoring threat down. Um, it should be a good game. I, I, I think uh, St Brendan's will run it very close. Um, like the exceptional backs again, like I mentioned Eric and um, Dahi before. But uh, Crotter, I think, will want to keep on winning. They're getting into that habit now and they want to stay winning. Um, again, there's only going to be a couple of points in it, I think, for Crotter. Yeah, Killian Trent, uh, you like Adam O'Sullivan's long puck outs beyond the halfway line to the number 10 slot, we call it, and there Killian Trent will, will move up after every wide or whatever move in there, and I'm sure the cause they will have uh, noted that, and will put somebody there like yeah, Tommy I'd, Casey or... I'd, well, Artford, well, it's too late for cause I suppose. Artford, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I expect Artford to be a lot more wasted after they're usually very... They're a very clever like team. They always have been very clever tactically. I don't know, is it, is it the football or something like that? But they they're always well set up. They always know what they're doing. I think they'll be they'll definitely have seen it. And like I just can't understand how it kept being a one on one against Causeway. You know, you'd imagine it should at least be the wing forward should be following Killian anyway, and there should be another defender there. But they have to keep an eye on that. I think they will. They they generally do set up quite well. They're fairly rigid in the back as well. Um, if Darren is back fit, it's a huge boost for them, even if he's only there to finish the game. Um, I think if they can up it anyway, they'll they'll give a real good account to themselves. It's my draw of the week anyway, so I can go for a draw on it. Um, <laughs> but I, I think I, I I do think they can they can give a good um a good account and um Krata, just if let's say they mightn't risk beans if, if there's any niggle there. I don't think they're gonna risk Sean McGrath if he was in the boot last yeah. week. Um, so they might just catch him out, I think. Yeah. Maybe. 
The man who Go I again. introduced in the panel is the most uh, sort of outgoing and ferocious of the whole lot of my predictors. He goes for a draw. I mean, if you see, same last weekend, if you sit that long on the fence, we'll have to bring some soda cream for you. It's crazy, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> right, so we have uh, a resounding um, two people with a lot of good sense and knowledge go for Pat <laughs> O'Neill's. And then we have a man who's jumped on a fence again. Um, and he's going for a draw between Crotter and St. Brendan's. Right, our final game, and we'll fly through this. No disrespect to either side, but we're getting tight on time, John. Uh, 6.30 on Sunday evening, you'll be there and I'll be there to watch three, pa three Parnells having a go at Abby Dorney. Abby Dorney haven't played yet. They're not playing well. They have loads of injuries, Aidan tells us. Um, you know, and Parnells, will they take them? Uh, I don't think so. I think Parnells uh, will have the confidence from last week. They will aim to produce a similar type of display, maybe get more scores from play. They had 10 frees out of their 14 points last Friday night. But what they did was, like like we say, they were more than competitive. They were in the game from start to finish. They, their card is marked now, though. Uh, Abby Dorney certainly won't underestimate them after seeing them last weekend. So that's a, that's a little bit of a pity for Tralee Parnells that... Uh, they they've given away some of their uh, some of their style of play and some of their tactics etc etc. I'm looking forward to watching Abby Dorney. I, I I really do believe that the 50 year anniversary and seeing what Crotta did last year, ending their own 55 year drought, it has to make Abby Dorney more more motivated than they've ever been with this group of players. Um, Michael O'Leary is always a, an interesting player to watch and. Most certainly one of the biggest losses that the Kerry senior hurling team have had over the last couple of years because no matter what team you have, even at the top level, at the All-Ireland Senior Championship level, you need a principal ball winner under puck outs in the half forward line, even inside a full forward if you need a goal. He's, he, he's fantastic at that. I always look forward to seeing him. The likes of James O'Connor, then you have Brendan O'Leary, you have um, Jack Shee and David Egan. Plenty of talent in this Abbey Dorney team, I think. Tralee Parnells will do exactly what they did last week. They'll um, aim to stay in the game for as long as possible. They probably will achieve that, but I can see Abby Dorney wanting to start their campaign with a flourish, and I fancy Abby Dorney to win uh, comfortably enough by the final whistle. Very good, yeah. I don't want to embarrass Eden now, so I'll go to Ian next. Parnells um, against Abby Dorney. I suppose Parnells did so well. Uh, last weekend there might be a false uh, hope now that they can continue on and surprise Abby Dorney but I suppose anything is possible but you'd have to say Abby Dorney they have the experience the O'Leary brothers you know James O'Connor I mean they have some very good players they have yeah and um, Oshin Mansell uh, is back as well he's he is huge, as well yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a big plus for them as well yeah I saw, I saw Abby Dorney playing in Kilmoyle in the County League semi-final a few weeks ago and um, they were exceptionally good um, Kim Miley got a very, very late goal uh, to win it by a point or two, um, but I thought uh, they, they were really good. They had a nice setup. Um, Michael O'Leary dominated, to be fair, with them uh, from freeze, but from play as well, winning, winning, winning lots of freeze. Um, I suppose it's how Parnells um, are able to manage him, and uh, if they can, I suppose they'll, they'll, they'll have a chance. But Ty Brick probably will take it. You would imagine so. Size, would imagine. Size, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. And uh, whoever picks up the breaks, then maybe if, if, he, if he can. But look, the, the other side of it then is that um, that expectation and the pressure maybe of, of the 50th anniversary, yes. that, that brings his own kind of demons and tormentation as well. And it mightn't be such a great thing to have in their heads. And I think if, can, if they can just tip away, like Crash did last year, just with no expectation to just get through each game without uh, getting carried away, um, they should be good enough. To, they, they are good enough to win it. Um, whether they do or not uh, easily is, is another thing. I think Panels will put up a good fight, but um, Abby Dorney will, will be good enough in the end. Yeah, and in Abby Dorney, well, you're not going for a draw here, I know. Uh, Abby Dorney against uh, Parnells. Uh, what's the mood in Abby Dorney like in the, in the camp? I, I presume they're, they're positive enough. As, as Ian said, their county league uh, form was pretty good. Um, and I think they have a lot of players uh, back fit there. Have, you don't have too many injuries, do you? There actually isn't a whole pile. Um, I don't think there's any major ones. I'd say there might be guys probably managing game time more than anything, but I'd say they probably have close to full squad. Like, bar Mike Satchel is injured, he, he's not going to be playing. Yeah. Um, I'd say they're, they're more just excited to get going, really. They're, they're a, a bit anxious to get going, I'd say. 
Um, but the week off is fairly helpful just to get fellas right and all that. And uh, probably a chance to get an extra challenge game or something like that as well. Um, so I'd say they're, they're just looking forward to it. Um, they, let's say the, the guys will know each other very well. Uh, a lot of, we actually, let's say, joined up minor a couple of years ago. So um, a lot of the boys know their, their opposition fairly well. And um, you were saying there with Ty Brick, though, picking up Michael Airy, like that takes a pile away from Parnell's end, though, if he's tied up yeah. with that job, you know. Yeah. So that's kind of where that's, you'd be expecting maybe Dorney then to, to kind of come out on top. Um, my only grievance with the game is um, it couldn't be on at 2 o'clock of the day or something. Half six is fairly late for these Sunday matches, isn't it? Yeah, but sure, you were going to bed straight after it for work the following morning, so why should 6.30 in the evening make any difference to you? If it was this, anyway, it's from out a few hours earlier next week. So. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, I'll be doing it anyway. Well, they yeah, they should, be, should be winning it anyway, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Well, it looks like over the weekend we have uh, a lot of games, but uh, it looks like Pally High are strongly fancied. Uh, it looks like Pally Duff are getting the nod over Causeway. Um Except we have a draw um, expert here in uh, Eden, and that's Crot and St. Brendan's, isn't it? Is your draw yeah, game this yeah, weekend? Yeah. Um, as I said, the more sensible ones are figuring out that Crot might keep on winning. Not I'm the much. only one with a different we'll, opinion. We'll like see. It. We'll see, no? <laughs> yeah, we'll see. You might be right. Yeah. And if you do, you'll move up to the top seat here. Um, and then Abby Dorney probably will be too strong for Parnells, but Parnells are, have nothing to lose in this game. They, they were brilliant last weekend and they're a great addition to the Senior Hurling Championship. So that's about it from us this week. Um, and I'd like to first of all thank Breed McKelligot, the chairperson here of John Mitchell's at short notice gave us this venue. Uh, and it's a fabulous venue. And uh, we've had beautiful air pumping in here, uh, keeping it nice and cool. And uh, it, has, uh, it has been a pleasure to bring uh, this edition of the Gary Super Value Senior Hurling Championship look back and look forward in association with Clubber uh, TV. Now, Clubber, as I said, if you go on the link on any of the social media or uh, clubber.ie, you will find a link. And uh, the <coughs> annual pass is, well, €150 Euro bar, some loose change. And um, you can sign up and you'll have all the hurling matches. You'll have the football later on as well, right in to very late in the year. So it's non-stop and we'll be delighted to bring you non-stop action in uh, that front. So it's only for, left for me to thank my panel, John O'Dowd. Thanks very much. Um, really enjoyed your company. To the next, well, we don't know, he might be, uh, to Ian Brick for all your knowledge and uh, your eight county championship medals, plus your um, six hitting in cricket, and to Aidan, the, the banker, uh, who likes his banker bet is a draw, um, and he has won again this week for us. In fairness to him, He's about the only one who's different. Everybody else agrees, so it's nice. So maybe we might have to bring back James McCarthy next week <laughs> <laughs> just uh, to add, add, add more to it. And, of course, we Tommy O'Connor last week. Now, the man who makes all this happen, believe it or not, is never seen on this camera because he's behind the camera. And that's John C. O'Shea. And um, anybody who knows John C. knows the excellence that he is, how excellent he is. Um, as a producer and uh, with all his stats and uh, is it sideline eye or something he calls himself something like that um, and uh, now he is uh, producing this for us tonight and he put all those highlight packages together while John you were snoozing in the bog up near <laughs> Tabert. So that's it for tonight and uh, we hope you enjoyed the preview. Um, we had the highlights, we have a bit of information and we have a bit of humour as well. Um, and uh, that's the, uh, the, 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 the end of it. So from me, Mark Murphy, it's uh, goodbye for now. And we, you'll hear us, if you don't see us, at the weekend covering all four games live and exclusive on Clubber TV.